Okay, we've been informed by production that we are pretty sure that this is Quark. We will still obviously refer to them by their new preferred tag, Talon. Yep. But they are starting on the Game & Watch, the character that Quark was previously known for and now Talon is known for. Dude, I think he's lying to us because I just looked up Quark Bird on Twitter and that ain't him. Like, that ain't <laughs> the account doesn't exist. So somebody grab that while Something's still going on. and then extort him for the handle that he claims to have already on Smash. This is a, uh, a bigger conspiracy than we originally thought. Right. As Quark <laughs> takes an early lead on base mage, 62%. Yeah. Worth pointing out, this matchup has in the past been referred to as Jigglypuff's worst. And I'm talking about like a game ago. Puff obviously a much better character than she used to be in Smash 4, and then she was in Brawl. And even a much better character than she was at the beginning of Ultimate. She has received true. several significant buffs throughout the lifetime of this game. And Base Mage, more than anybody else on this planet, has shown how strong she can be. Yeah, this dude is actually so raw, constantly defying the odds with this character. And you know, oh my God! Speaking of the odds, they were almost in Talon's favor. Just if Base Mage had like been a little bit less patient and jumped in there, that would have been curtains on the first stock. But Talon not getting as lucky as he was with the RNG. Just want to point out, by the way, the reasons why this matchup was considered so awful for Jamie. Oh, it's Bob. terrible! It's the range that Game and Watch has. It's the consistent, reliable recovery. And you know, Puff normally really does thrive on those edge guards. You're not going to find too many of them against a character like Game and Watch. And then, oh my god, she's so light and he hits so damn hard. It's looking good for Talon so far, but Base Mage, of course, we know this guy to not really care about matchup ratios or, or Twitter ratios even. But <laughs> yeah, if you Talon want, doesn't have a Twitter account, so it doesn't face him. If you want to know what characters Game & Watch bodies, ask yourself like one or two questions. And the main one is going to be, does this character have a disjoint? And if the answer is no, they probably lose to Game & Watch. There are a few notable exceptions, but Around the roster, it's it mostly holds true. Puff, Falcon, uh, Fox, another yep. one. Like yep. characters without disjoints do not do well into this character. Now, in this game, Puff has some worse matchups, namely being characters like ZSS or Sonic. Yeah, but I'm really surprised that ZSS is so ZSS bad. ZSS bodies Puff. I yeah. think it's her second worst. Uh, talking about Puff matchups, I think Sonic is the worst. ZSS is the second worst. And then it's like Game & Watch and Yoshi tied for third with characters then like Ike in fourth. Yeah, I, I would have given number one to this guy right here, this flat man that you're witnessing before you. But either way, Base Mage really suffering, regardless if it's a yeah. first or third or seventh worst matchup. Talon doing exactly what he needs to do to keep this character at bay. Up B every time she touches your shield or gets anywhere near you for the most part. And there it is, the parry into the dash back chair, accounting for the mega air grip that this character's got. Oh. There is a, a slight win condition for base mage here, and that is rest. Uh, rest Several not, of them. <laughs> not as useful as it was, obviously, in Ooh! melee in this game. Oh! Wow. The, the, the pressure does not end. He did not want the sweet spot there. I mean, like... Obviously, it was what was going to happen, but if he hit the sour spot, it would have sent Puff at such an unfavorable angle with not that many jumps left, and it could have been easy pickings with the back air. Either way, we're seeing Talon with an insane lead at this point. And Base Mage is, like, uniquely screwed in this matchup because Base Mage has two characters. For uh, yeah. Puff's bad <laughs> matchups, guess who he goes? Fox, baby. Fox. Yep. And man. guess who pretty. else loses to Game & Watch? A lot of characters do, well. and a none perhaps as dramatically as Puff. And uh, I wouldn't say Fox is like that, that awful, but you know, look at Light and Meister's set count, and that tells pretty much the entire story right Light there. beating Meister is pop-off inducing for a reason, and right. that is because this is such a difficult matchup for that character. But it's not the matchup we're seeing, at least in game number one. Base Mage on the verge of dropping said game. Just one more chair, one more down air, something along those lines will do it, but Game & Watch, he's not too heavy himself. If Base Mage can take this stock and then find maybe a combo like an up air rest as he finds it with back air. Smashville right. Blast Zones could be the, the disaster maker for Game & Watch, but nope, it's just the fair, <laughs> the bomb. It's also disastrous for Puff. She's, of course, significantly lighter than even Game & Watch. Second lightest in the game, and that's not going to serve you well. I mean, Game & Watch is, what, the third lightest in the game? I think they're, like, right there. Uh, I think Squirtle sits between them, and there might be one other one. But either way, it's Pichu Puff, and then, like, you know, <laughs> it's pretty bad to be even near those two. Yeah, yeah. pull it, pull it I'm, up. I'm pulling I it up, because I, I don't know either. Like, I think, I think what Squirtle kinda, is lighter than Game & Watch. What kind of nerd has the, uh, the weight chart memorized? 
Somebody in chat does. I know that for a fact. Right. All right, lightest character, Pichu. Second lightest, Jigglypuff. And then third lightest is actually a tie between Squirtle and oh, Mr. Damn. Game Watch. Well, so we you know, but on the list, Squirtle's between Game Watch okay, and Puff. Okay. So I was right. They are both anyway. 75 weight units tied for third yeah. lightest in the game. We're both right. I've never let's, been wrong. Let's take that in dub. my entire life. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, here, here it is. Game two is going to be FD. I like this choice from Base Mage. Just opening things up, not leaving Game & Watch any platforms to sit underneath and pressure with neutral air, with up air, with whatever he wants, really. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be a, too much of a difference maker, but I think this is less bad than Smashville. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Smashville also has the, uh, the added detriment to Jigglypuff of that one central platform that she has to to find a way to get to Game & Watch when he's hiding under and throwing out hitboxes. And right. spoiler alert, she doesn't really have much of a way, but Game & Watch certainly should have a way to get back up on stage here. I am surprised that Puff is actually succeeding at edge guarding Game & Watch. And even though it didn't result in the stock, it certainly resulted in a lot of percent. Oh, and that time the edge guard is going to kill. All right. Also, you said Game & Watch is 75 units. Uh, I, I think, think Puff is 62. So the Puff weight is 68. cap is 68. 68. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's still 62. Pretty, so pretty you, you didn't pull that number gap. out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, I think in Melee, they're 55 and 62. But, you know, I, it's going back years and I was born in 02. I, right. <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> what Melee is. You. Either way, we've got this time a uh, stock lead for Base Mage, which is going to be huge. Game & Watch, he does very much struggle to approach. Absolutely. Base Mage, though. Been doing not the best job of walling him out, despite that uh, point in her favor. Trying to approach now, does get the lingering Nair. Tries okay. to Nair back onto stage, but Base Mage having recognized another one of those, I call them universal habits, where it's just like, this is good on this character, so every main of this character probably does this. Yeah, and that is like Nair with Ledge Hop Nair with Game & Watch. <laughs> yep. You're definitely gonna see more of those from Talon, even if he got punished for that one. Let's see, though. Can he find a way to close the stock off this juggle situation? Base Mage nearly out of jumps. Not that it matters all that much. He got tons of air drift and a huge air dodge. Oh, can he won it. Back? I think he messed up the auto cancel window on the back air and paid for it with his stock. Ended up losing out to the chair there. All right, don't let the damage values fool you here either. Game & Watch, obviously insane combo potential and insane kill power. So this could go by the wayside for Base Mage a little sooner than he wants it to. And Talon has been untouched since Base Mage respawned. Dash attack in, it's the sour spot. So it sends Base Mage up, but that's actually worse for him because he's trying to find a way to back onto the ground to refresh those jumps. Talon trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. Another up, he had a shield, but this time it whiffs. The back air doesn't though, and look at that, Max. We're just about even. Yup. If anything, it's Game of Watch's favor at this point. 20% between these two, but one good hit and Base Mage is dead. One of those smash attacks. And oh, wow, one hit and Talon is dead. Dash that attack was, so strong from Puff. That was some terrible DI. I'm going to keep it a stack facts, with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Chasing down the lead once more is Talon. And Puff doesn't really have to go anywhere near Game of Watch if she doesn't want to with a stock lead like this. And that's where she's going to thrive here. Wow! That was Playing ballsy. with fire, bro! <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, and catching the jump as well. Base Mage knows exactly how Talon's looking to escape disadvantage and also consistently catching the two frames. So you don't have to challenge the hitbox on fire head-to-head. -head. You actually just catch him once he enters the ledge grab state, and there's no hitbox to speak of. Yeah, that lingering Nair serving its purpose phenomenally for Base Mage just is like, I don't even have to time this right because my Nair lasts so long. You'll have to up beat during the... the the span of this and once again Talon off stage that was really weird but it worked base mage trades up B for Nair and he doesn't come out on top but thanks to the stock lead he does it in the end I will take it seeing those perpendicular kill splashes it's like <laughs> who dies first doesn't matter yeah no it does not all right so base mage putting one on the board looks like the FD counter pick did really come into play there I think depriving game and watch of landing mix-ups with up B into down air, really gonna go a long way. And we saw pretty much exactly that. Something I wanted to point out in the Smashville game, there's one point where Talon did a really high up B and was just coasting at the top of the screen in the parachute. And Base Mage knew he couldn't go anywhere near him. One of the reasons Game Watch is so good against characters without disjoints is because they can't challenge his key on the way down. 
right? And that's such a huge difference maker. Like, Base Mage could have even paid for it with his life yeah. if he had tried to go for a juggle and missed. Yeah, they have to challenge it horizontally, and yep. obviously horizontal challenge is not all that conducive to juggles, especially when Game & Watch is so far above you. Yep. A character, she has phenomenal air drift, but Puff is slow in the air. She's yeah. slow, slow. And so when Game well, & Watch is that far above you, well, you she's really fast. Horizontally, horizontally. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like down. trying, Oof. trying to get up there to Game and Watch to challenge it horizontally. You're not, yeah. you're, you can't. And it's not even all that easy, right? Puff has what forward air as her furthest reaching move. Yeah. All, almost all attached to her feet. So you could still have a trade or a clean loss when it comes to challenging the key. Yeah, I, I think this matchup is just awful. I mean, we've said it pretty much every way we can, but guy like Base Mage, he's unfazed by that sort of thing. As you see, this set tied up at one apiece. But still got to see if this one goes the distance. We might get another. Uh, well, no, never mind. It wasn't even game five with Icy and Saigon. But it felt like it. <laughs> it. It did. The pause between games was basically a match long. Looking for that landing nair. Been such a, uh, a staple of the Game & Watch game plan. Oh, man. And look at that. The preemptive up B. Not even waiting for Base Mage to touch his shield. That was a postemptive up B, too. <laughs> he did both. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, and you're going to run into some trouble when it comes to the chef here Bruh. as well. Wow. Talon just banging on base mage, touching the ground. Puff looking to avoid that at all costs, though. And, yeah, how do you approach the threat of a charging up smash? Game of Watch's moves, you know, they're a little slow to start, but they're very quick to finish, and they're so threatening. If you mess up, oh, a Game of Watch up air kill. One uh, of the rarest sights in this game. And a 50-second zero to death from Talon. Now that he has that stock lead, He's just gonna he's gonna play in the corner. He's gonna play grounded and central so that base mage just cannot approach. And Max, I have, I have a little bit of a spoiler alert to answer your question. How do you approach a game and watch who's just narrowing in place and up smashing and up being? You don't. You don't. Yeah. Well, especially well, for Jigglypuff. Oh, putting him to sleep. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on. We got sleep chains. Oh! No! Now it is you who sleeps, my friend. Good night. Oh, you're alive. Right. Should have down smashed so first. I'm sorry, but like just for the commentary moment. You should have died. Why did you DI? Should have homie mage? DI'd for did the real base mage. <laughs> exactly, bro. That was my chance. All right, I think I'm gonna just hang it up. Speaking of should have, Talon definitely should have down smashed before that F smash to get that little bit of extra percent. Exactly. Or should have just crossed up. That way he was sending towards the right side blast zone with the F smash instead of coast to coast. Yeah, there were several ways that he. Could there have were found several should have's, but shoulda, coulda, woulda. And to be honest, man, I don't think he should care because he's up by matter. so much at this point. He's about to take the stock regardless with the next significant hitbox. Oh, wow. Just before the hitbox on that key comes out. Oh, wow, Base Mage is so good at making sure he doesn't. <gasps> oh, okay. Oh, that sucks. Base Mage, why did you head bob for that? That sucks, bro. Yeah, right? That would put <laughs> the opponent on tilt no matter what. You didn't hit him. He just died. You know what? I, Fair I enough. Think, yeah, I don't know. I, what if I, like, I love Base Mage. And I also love watching Base Mage's player cam during his sets. He's very <laughs> like active and animated, and it's very fun to watch. Hey, you gotta be in tune with your emotions when you're playing a game like this. Sometimes it can serve you well. Uh, obviously, it backfires a lot too with some players. But Base Mage, you know, he, at the very least, he's engaged right now, despite being down by so much. He's still feeling it. He still knows he's a contender to take this one. And Ooh. wow, look at Talon going nuts for the kill right there, looking for the upbeat to just nudge him into the blast zone but it might be that hunger that starts to cost him here. It's definitely also like that moment. Uh, I, I call it the, the moment of realization into throw, where you go, you, you're, you're this like good player, but not considered like the super tippy top level, not PGR level player essentially. And you're about to beat somebody like Base Mage at the top of their game. And you start thinking to yourself, oh God, I'm about to be base mage. I'm about to get a PGR win. I'm about to go in the PG stats upset thread. Right, right. And then because you're thinking about that, you lose focus on the game, and things start going poorly because those top players, they're dialed in. Exactly. That line of thinking is prime time choking. So let's see. All too common. Talon, Roll can out. you shake off that blunder that you had on the uh, on your first stock and base mage is second like this could have been a two stock lead for him instead not only did he whiff the kill but he's also starting to see this comeback come to life base mage has now lived to 187 percent a a rarity to say nothing of any character let alone puff right especially against the killing machine that is game and watch and it's looking like talon is really struggling to find his footing once again okay there we go the parry into dash attack just barely gonna reach him right there. 
And now, again, we could have been here two and a half minutes ago and with another stock on Talon, but instead it's dead even at this point. Base Mage not giving up the chase off the stage, staying persistent and staying aggressive. Ooh, Clank's out there in a really weird interaction and Base Mage going to take it for all of its worth. Finding 48% and now another potential edge guard oh. string. I, wow. Any I other character was in some real hot water right there. But Game of Watch, super fast up B, super big hitbox on it. It's gonna get Talon out of some trouble. And yeah, this time Base Mage just jumping away after the Chef, pretty much as he has every time. And Talon keeps looking for dash attacks as if this isn't a super floaty character who can get away in the air. Oh, okay, hold on. Talon's starting to fire back though. He just needs to stay collected. And you know, so far he's doing a pretty good job. Oh, oh, oh yet again, oh. trying to cover the ground after Chef. You gotta know, at this point, Base Mage is not looking to go anywhere near the ground. Base Mage has figured out how to approach around Chef, and Talon really hasn't counter-adapted. Good patience for Base Mage. A lot of people make the initial mistake of, I'm going to run at Game & Watch when he's charging a smash attack. Please don't. Surely I'll be able to interrupt him and hit him before he releases it. Surely. Or maybe punish the whiff. No, you will not. Those moves end so quickly. I've seen enough Meister to know where this is going. Right. All right, we're gonna see Yet again, another chef attempt, but this time it's base mage meeting them halfway on the approach with a grab, and no way! Punches the key for a kill and for the game three win. The mid-set pop-off too, base mage in his bag right now, being able to win from so far behind. And Max, you mentioned it already, I can't help but go back to that whiffed yep. rest and then lack of kill from Talon. Yep. That was the turning point, that was the swinging point. It could have been three stocks to one, and instead, Base Mage decided to live forever, to become immortal on that second stock. And it all went downhill from there for Talon. And now, it's two to one set point for Base Mage. We run it back to Small Battlefield, and it might just be that, that uh-oh moment that yeah. hits you. If Talon does lose this set, I think he's gonna be thinking about that rest for a long time. Either way, obviously this is still winner's bracket, right? So yeah. both these players have a shot to continue their runs here. Oh! On the bright side, though, every uh, every top player has that like moment that haunts them. I like ask any of them, and they will tell you like, "Hey, what? Don't ask them, because that's kind of a weird question." But they all have it. Yeah, don't like randomly approach someone. Like, and hey, say, hey, what's that one like deepest regret of your tournament? Career? Hey, Leo, <laughs> when when did you like come the closest but fall short? You want to relive really those demons? <laughs> Save that for a Twitter AMA. Oh. God, I was very scared there. I thought there. Puff was dead. Yeah, and you know, if it had buried too, she certainly would have been. Actually, no, there was a trade, so I don't think Quark would, uh, Talon would have been able to get there in time. All right, either way, here we go. Talon yet again with a little bit of a lead here, but you gotta be less brave with those down airs, right? You just keep kind of repetitively throwing them out. Base Mage is slowly starting to adjust. At the very least, even if he's not punishing them, he's not gonna hit by them either. Ooh, mm. trades out with the back air, a fair of his own, and now Talon off stage. Base Mage just barely whiffs out on that back air, just slightly misspaces it, both due to the small frame of Game and & Watch and due to not quite being low enough to the ground. And I gotta ask, how in the hell does Puff get back down to the ground against moves like Game & Watch's Nair, his up air, his up B? My god, if you let that rip any sooner, we were looking at a dead Puff, it's not gonna matter, Talon picks up the slack. Base Mage. Oh, okay. He's slick with it. He's around the world. And we see, once again, that universal habit you were talking about among Game & Watch players. Ledge hop into Nair. This time he's going to change it up a little bit. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very similar to Wolf's Bayonet hitbox right there. The actual pan from Chef going to shake Pup off. And now what do you do? Yeah, see, this is that moment that I was talking about on Smashville. But Base Mage stays calm, punishes it horizontally, like we were talking about before. Falling Dare, but Game & Watch just up bees and gets out of dodge. All in all, pretty even, and that makes me scared for Talon because if Base Mage came back last game from that far behind, right. what does he do when he's got a lead? Well, and the Nair just ripping through every single slice of bacon. I don't oh. want your... Oh! Okay, now, nope, never mind. <laughs> that was terrifying, and that was like... <laughs> Everything is terrifying, and it's so drawn out, too. Like, all of these interactions are lasting so long. It's spooky season, bro. We are now... A week and a half into October? No, exactly a week into October. So, looks like Base Mage is getting festive. All right, weak hit of forward smash. Look at this deep chase 
Oh, the stage spike, it's not gonna matter. This is Jigglypuff we're talking about. Oh, and barely able to stick the neutral air out, keep himself safe, but not for long. Base Mage answers with the back air, and now Game & Watch is in that very uncomfortable position. He's gotta approach, especially against a character as mobile as Puff. This could be really difficult. And Base Mage very much knows it, just gonna keep throwing out things to cover space and then fading back. What? What, what a play from Talon. Run up, down smash into F smash. Kind of getting a little bit of revenge, a little bit of revitalization from the failure in game three. And now, it's last stock, last hit. Man, Inner side life for Talon, but still doable. I was about to get on Talon's case for throwing like four down smashes out. Like this is Puff we're talking about. The character He's with the six expert. jumps. He, she's not touching the ground anytime soon, but base mage gets a little impatient, pays for it with his life. Now let's see, Talon, if you get one clean breakaway here, we could see you get a lot of damage, my God. I think Game Watch was dead to that forward smash. That's a really strong move. No, well, up be out of shield, still continuing to do its job. There's one certainty in any matchup with Game & Watch involved, and that certainty is up B. Base Mage actually going back up on stage. I don't think he meant to do that. He wanted to cover the uppies like he's been doing so far throughout this set. Okay. Very clean, yep. If that was the how parachute. the set ended, I was going to cry. Yeah, even if he got the air dodge off, but Base Mage like covered it, that it, yeah. still would have been very tragic. Good use of the jump to get away from that from Base Mage. Now has Base Mage in the air but uppies and whiffs. Uppies and doesn't whiff. Up to the skies with you. Dude, I was actually a little scared that we were about to see Game & Watch's up air kill. kill. for a second time in a set. Yeah, but at 72. <laughs> there is a world. You yeah. got a little bit of that H-Box DI in you? <laughs> okay. But he got that dog in him instead. He's looking to find this back air. That's the dog influence, bro. Oh, all right. This is looking real scary for Talon. What are you Rising doing, bucketing? I didn't bucket. like that. No, I like it. It gives him a little more lift, but unfortunately lifting himself right into the back air from Base Mage, who's going to close that one out. Three to one in a terrible matchup for his character. Definitely had a little bit of an assist from Talon with that big choke in the middle of game.